At the T-minus three-minute mark, tape recorders on board the spacecraft were turned on. These recorders record both voice and data. And we're back. This is 105.9, the radiator, the rocket shop. And with me now is Two Cents in the Tilt. Hello, guys. Hi. Hey. How's everyone doing? Great. Pretty Glad good. To be here. <laughs> I, I love your instruments. I can't wait to listen to them uh, do their thing, but they're gorgeous, just, just in general. <laughs> it's the Thank lighting. You. It's lighting. Yeah. Okay. It really well. shines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad our lighting can bring this beauty out. Um, we always start with a song. So, what have you guys got for us? Uh, this is a tune called Esparex, and it's about a little town in uh, southwestern New Mexico called Hillsboro. Um, kind of like a little artist community, and there was a saloon there that we used to go dancing in. Um, so that's what this is about. <clears throat> about New Mexico. Um, is that where you all originate from or is this uh, is this a one person's recollection? That's just my recollection. Yeah, we uh, I lived out there for about five years and um, but I'm a New Englander. I grew up in a small town in New Hampshire, central New Hampshire. And did uh, you all meet up in Vermont? Yes. Yep. Yep. And what what's the story behind that? Because uh, I mean you all played pretty 
you, you got a unique sound to you. Um, how did you originally kind of meet up and, and form and decide that this is the sort of music you want to create? Well, <laughs> I think we all took our, our own paths to getting to this sort of music in general. I think we, um, you know, picked up either bluegrass or old time style music, and which is just a very communal music. So it's something that we were doing just for fun. And then um, Kim and I went to college together and then went our separate ways for, for many years and um, reconnected several years ago at a bluegrass jam. And during the time that we were apart, we had both started playing these instruments and met up and played music. We we're like, oh, this is kind of fun. This would be cool if we like lived in the same place and made music together and um, sort of had this idea and ended up moving to uh, Montpelier within a few weeks of each other in 2013. Um, and then in the meantime, as soon as I got to Vermont, I started going to bluegrass jams and that's where I met Amabel and Ed and and Bell and I also kind of hit it off and wanted to make music together. And yeah, and, and part of that is that um, bluegrass is kind of traditionally more of there's more men than women, and so when you see another woman who's like a good picker, you're like, oh my god, <laughs> 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 let's play together. And uh, and we also ran a jam for a little while together down in Montpelier. Um, and so yeah, but we had a mission to start a band, and Kim happened to have moved here too, so we were super psyched. And we suckered in basis. We <laughs> we're like, we need someone to practice with. We're like, quick, pick our best songs. Get them in. It worked. I mean, this all happened at a bluegrass festival where I was there playing mandolin and guitar, and uh, they came over and asked me if I would play bass with them for a few songs. So I borrowed a bass. And it sounded amazing to me. So did they just you know. assume you could play bass? Was <laughs> no, there no, any we no the jams. <laughs> yeah, because we were we all live uh, locally, and we had been to jams, all, and we knew each other from jams together, bluegrass jams. So and we yeah. kind of picked Ed because he has such a great personality, well. and we're like, we want Ed for our bass player, and he's like, oh no no no, I'm in way too many bands at the time. <laughs> And so when we were at Gray Fox Bluegrass Festival, I'm like, let's have a rehearsal and let's get him to play with us. And uh, he's been in the band ever since, so it worked. I mean, it just sounded great to me. I was like so happy. Like this is why you. we keep him around. Oh, he's so nice. nice. <laughs> Am I saying the right thing? Yeah. <laughs> I think your contract just got extended. Right. Plus, uh, he's an uh, amazing good musician too. Yes, that always. Thank you. Yeah. Always a plus. Um, and so I, I read. Um, the Seven Days article about you, and one of the lines on there, which which you guys have, have used yourself in the description, is uh, two cents in the till are legitimate heirs to the Vermont tradition of great porch music. Now, um, as you can tell, I'm not from Vermont. Um, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what what great porch music is, uh, other than this. Uh, so, would anyone care to give me a bit of a history lesson? Kim, you want to feel that? <laughs> 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 I guess, hmm, porch music might might fall in the more old-time tradition of uh, kind of fiddle banjo tunes, and I, gu I guess that's probably, someone help me out here. Um, <laughs> I think you're on the right track. So I mean, that's what I, I was like thinking. Like the communal, like, gathering, how it's sort of social, all... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's hard for us to know what that meant, right. but um, we would guess, you know, the porch. It's it's acoustic music. We're not all plugged in. It's a social thing, and porches are typically a place in the summer where people gather and enjoy the outdoors, and all those things are uh, for a hot four, four months, we, we <laughs> yeah. two months. Well, I mean, it originated down <laughs> south, so there was four months to play on the porch down right. there. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get to play on the porch as much up here. Yeah, I, or at least if the if you do the the ones with the with the windows, Screens. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Screens Screens for sure. two radiators <laughs> blasting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and is so much of a um, is so much of a scene down in Albuquerque for bluegrass music. You know, it's different out there. There is, um, they're looser. Um, New Englanders, I would say, are a little more. Mm, uh, adhering to tradition mm. um albuquerque is a little looser you know some folk songs sneak in and uh but there's definitely a scene out there and that's where i started playing i used to play in rock and roll and um and then i got into this kind of music out there and uh, there's you know there's festivals there's a telluride bluegrass festival and the pagosa four corners folk festival and there's all kinds of picking that goes on just like here mm -hmm. but that but that it's a little looser like what kind of music you can play or how good you have to be mm. it's a little more hierarchical here it, in, in certain in certain places yeah well i, I mean a it doesn't really surprise me i think, I think for 
the northeast is kind of known for being a little bit tightly wound. Um, <laughs> well, then I want to clarify that like it's more New England in general seems a little more that way, but Vermonters are are pretty chill. Mm. Like I feel, you know, it's pretty comfortable picking with Vermonters. It's a very welcoming scene here. Yeah. Now we've had a lot of bluegrass bands come through, uh, and you know, there's a lot of bluegrass festivals are kicking around in the summer, especially and uh, and bluegrass nights. Um, what is it about Vermont that kind of uh, is fertile fertile ground for these kind of bands for, for bluegrass bands? Hmm. A lot of great beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it. Citizen cider. Um, it just seems to fit culturally. You know, it's sort of uh, it's sort of like a, a rootsy culture in general. Kind of that back to the land, um, enjoying nature. Everyone simple has things in six life. hobbies. Mm. Lots of hobbies. Music yeah. has to be one of them. <laughs> totally. Well, it's interesting because yeah. there's a lot of crossover, I think, between people who live in Colorado and live in Vermont, and there's a big scene like this in Colorado too. Yeah. So. I want to say it has something to do with the the natural environment, the mountains, you know, like the mountains, and mountain streams, music, and the sure. woods. And, it's weed, know. isn't it? Yeah. The roots are Appalachian music, and we are up here, a part of that Appalachian chain. But it's it's uh, you know kind of country. It's a type of country mm. music that um, just is is appealing. There's a there's a you know a, a repertoire that you could you could take with you from here all the way down to Georgia and everywhere in between and people will know the same similar tunes and you can you can take your instrument and, and pick with anyone the same tunes mm. up and down. They know the language. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ed, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Um, well, I would love to listen to another song. So, what have you guys got for us? Natalie tell you about this one? Yeah, so this next one is called It's a Brighter Day. Should we introduce who we are on our instruments? <laughs> oh, that, please, that? sorry. I'm always so bad <laughs> Seems like it this. makes sense. <laughs> i tell you what happens. The, the first song is played and a thousand questions pop in my head oh, while yeah. you're playing. And, uh, and I never get around to actually introductions of people. So please go around and, and introduce yourself and the, the, the instrument you play. Sure. Um, Kim McKee over here on the claw hammer banjo. I'm Natalie Babbage on mandolin. I'm Annabelle Sherlass on guitar. I'm Ed Sutton and I have acoustic bass. <laughs> Just in case the listeners are wondering, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> so you were going to tell about your new song. This, yeah. is, this is not on our first CD. This is hopefully going to be in our next yeah, CD. You re- yet to be released uh, original mm-hmm. called It's Brighter Day. It's just, uh, you know, when you're feeling down, you need a little pick-me-up. This is, this is a song for it. <laughs> Probably should have gotten you some hardwood for the stomping, but um, you're going to have to work it out. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Birds are singing their voices, ringing the trees are blowing, the creek is flowing, the sun is shining. Oh, my way. I'm on my way. No more to be the worrying. 
I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Never more to complain. It's brighter day. I'm on my way. It's brighter day. I'm on my way. It's a brighter day there by two cents <laughs> in the till. Now, oh, you okay? Yeah, it's fine. You good? This thing is a, it's my guitar. Oh, it makes it sound better, you know? I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw knocked my head for a second there. We're always banging into each other. Um, so you came out of your first album in 2018, self-titled. Um, so no, I'm, it wasn't self-titled, actually. Self -titled, no, it was, was called Greenland. Greenland, sorry, my yeah. bad. Um, and there's an indication here that a second album might be coming out at some point, or at least new songs are being written. some point, yeah. We've been writing a bunch since that album came out, and we've been playing them out, but um, haven't started recording them yet. But that's should be in the near future. It's on the, the agenda. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I hear from, from the, the first album is, uh, well, A, uh, you've been given high praise for writing original folk songs. So I, I kind of wanted to ask why you think that creating new authentic folk is is so difficult? Because obviously everyone knows the classics. Um, and I feel that, you know, creating music like this, um, it seems like everything that's been written has already been written. So coming out of new stuff is quite rare. Um, so why, why, why do you feel that is? Why do you think it's rare? Yeah. Um, well, I think because there is so much great, uh, you know, bluegrass and old time in the catalog, you know, in the in the in the song list. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people are just like, you know, let's record that cold tune and let's record that cold tune. But I don't know. We all have sort of have this creative impulse to write and um, and uh, we like what comes out. So we've been uh, we've been writing a lot of stuff. And, and also, you know, I think you kind of have to put a new spin on things or I mean time changes uh, culture changes and so um, you know it's good to to uh, document that I guess there's always new new stories to tell yeah exactly <laughs> but I feel like a lot of folk bands that come together maybe kind of start by playing the catalog and then sort of feel out where their strengths are where their impulses want to take them building off of that so we kind of did that too we yeah. started with a pretty standard you know Nellie Kane and um, you know and you ain't going nowhere and just some real standard stuff but our favorite was this one um, band that Amabel brought to us called the Honeycutters did this song where like all of the women murdered and bluegrass murder ballads sort of like get their revenge <laughs> yeah no, that was actually the blackberry bushes blackberry and, and they actually live in vermont now they moved here from washington um but they do a version of this old fiddle tune called salt creek and they put lyrics to it and it's basically like in bluegrass the women are always getting like thrown in rivers and mm. killed and you know terrible things happen to them so the song is kind of about the women taking taking that back one of these days i'm uh uh, they'll, they'll get down to Salt Creek is mm. sort of the gist of the song so I like that we'll have to get them in at some point if they are <laughs> in, uh, yeah, if they're, yeah they're, they're, around. they're around yeah and they're great they're fantastic so, yeah um, and an another question that kind of came to mind is um, well you got three singer songwriters in the group so how do you, you ensure that you keep a cohesive sound as a band I think we, really we shoot for balance i suppose like when we bring new songs to the table we kind of typically all bring the same at once and we all have slightly different tastes and kind of bring a different song to the table that keeps it i don't know i think that's part of our, our breadth i suppose of the different sounds we do is, is one of our strengths we, we tend to be overly democratic in our band, you know, it's just like, anytime someone wants to make a decision, it's like, no, we need to have a, a full band vote. <laughs> yeah. we'll like, if we all had to choose to go out a door, it would probably take us, like, a half an hour. No, you go, no, you go, no, you go. Um, I think it just sort of happens organically, too. Like, we all have pretty different sounds and tastes in what we write, but when we all kind of put it together, it just comes together in an organic way that sounds like two cents in the till hmm. maybe because of our harmonies and and, our, and the way we put our instruments together do, do you find you're all do you do you kind of have each of you have your own your own theme or something that you spe specifically uh, are drawn to when you're writing um, you know 
kind of you you were writing about New Mexico, for instance. Do you find like, a lot of your songs are about places, and and someone else's more about feelings and and events in their own lives, or is it is it just a big bulb mishmash, and you kind of influence each other in in that way? We we definitely each have our styles, but I don't think anyone is confined to one particular theme mm. or or type of song when they're writing. Yeah, I mean I think yeah. both of you have very. I guess we all have pretty diverse ranges of songs that we've written. But none of them sound like the others. <laughs> I did enjoy. It. I think uh, off off Greenland, maybe the the Times Argus when they reviewed it says like, and Kim's songs are about youthful pursuits. <laughs> <laughs> and like, then I think it was oh, either yeah, Seven Days sure. or, or the Times Argus that said Natalie. And then Natalie's songs are like the cheery That's songs. Sunniest, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah I thought Mine are the were dark. Like slower, but. <laughs> But things are changing. Like that first album, I was had just gone through a terrible breakup, so there was a lot of alcohol and remorse in those songs. But that's going <laughs> Very away <reasonable>. now. <laughs> now, kind of looking out into the world and writing more about other people and other things. And, and I'm much older now, so yeah. <laughs> I'm still, still pursuits in the past and stuff. Um, and I've I've, I've been been. Uh, indicated by my producer Bob that I should be asking you guys about the Smi- Spice on Snow Festival. Yes. So do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's this festival going on in Montpelier um, the last weekend of the month. So I believe that's the 24th through 26th. Uh, it's been going on, I believe it's the 10th year. Uh, it's a sort of a Cajun and old time festival of music and food and dance and song. It's really cool. Just all around town all weekend long. Um, in the evenings, there are Cajun dances where you can two-step and get wild. There's Saturday night, there's a big Cajun dinner, and there's a sort of a sit-down concert. Um, and then throughout the weekend, there's uh, free shows and, and venues all around town with local musicians and workshops. Um, yeah, yeah, and there's workshops for all the different acoustic instruments taught by really cool people. And there's a range of music, too. There's... there's um, there's a little bluegrass, there's a little old time, there's a little Cajun, there might even be a little country in there, I'm not sure. Probably somewhere um, in there, yeah. Yeah, so there's um, Molsky's Mountain Drifters is one of the bands yeah, the, the headliner this year. And a group from, I don't know if you guys, you've ever had Old Sky in here, but, um, oh, you should, they're absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're at the festival, too, so. Um, it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So and, where did you say that was again? In Montpelier. In Montpelier. Yeah. And there's venues all around town. So we'll be playing that Saturday afternoon, 2 to 4, at Bar Hill, the uh, gin distillery there. The new Bar Hill space. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know they had a place down there. Is it just That's opened a... up? Yeah. It's, it's huge. It's a year and a half ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Our really farmer's nice. market is in there now and all kinds of, it's pretty, it's a pretty happening space in Montpelier right now. Oh, fantastic. I'll have, definitely have to check that out. Um, so probably got about time for one more song. Uh, but apart from Spice on Snow, what else can we see you at? What else are you guys doing? When can we expect the album? Look at Kim. We're all, we're all looking at the pregnant yeah. lady over yeah. here. <laughs> we got a couple, you know, things on the horizon. Four, seven months out, but yeah, I'm due in March, so I'm just gonna see, see what that's all about. Yeah, I, f- I feel like you might have some other pressing issues sure. to attend to. I can hear Pillar kicking like, ugh, not with a banjo. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, put a fiddle in her hands when she's about two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the resentment. I can she's, already... <laughs> she's gonna come out tapping her foot. Oh, yes. <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna go. We're not gonna exactly go on hiatus because we might get together and pl- work on some of these originals mm. and stuff. Um, we've been adding some new music, so we might have a rehearsal or two. But it's really gonna depend on how Kim's life evolves with this new. People seem to make addition. it through. So yeah, I'm, I'm confident we'll get there. <laughs> Uh, well, I'd love to hear one last song uh, before you guys depart. What have you got for us? All right, this is one I wrote called uh, 32. Can I go over there, yeah. It's a breakup song. Oh. Is this one when you were younger? When I was younger, <laughs> when I was 32. <laughs> Which was just last week, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Very recent break. Mostly, mostly in tune, but y'all don't mind, right? <laughs>
two by two cents in the till. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for so much for having us. Having this is great. Anytime. Really cool scene in space here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. This is uh, it's like our fourth studio in the, in how many? Three five years? years? Five years? <laughs> you gotta keep your load light Sorry. by moving. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's my favorite one so far. So but wait, you've you. moved all this st bling well, and I, stuff? Well, I haven't. Time. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh, Bob over here is, uh, has probably done most of the sweating. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, you listeners can't see this, but there's like lights blinking and chandeliers and skulls and I mean, it's like wild in here. Mannequins, carpet duckies. <laughs> Go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's madness in a room. Yes. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, Thanks but thank, so much. Thank you guys so much for coming in. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. And uh, good luck with, the, with the new baby. <laughs> Future fiddler. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have got for you next week Heavy Gaze and Boys Cruise. A big thank you to Patanatics and obviously Two Cents in the Hill. In the Till. I keep saying that. Two Cents in the Till uh, for coming in tonight. They've been wonderful. This has been 105.9 The Radiator. I've been your host, Tom Proctor. Good night.